Okay, so this one I'm going to be covering competition. Okay, business competition. Okay, and how a lot of people think I won't enter that market because there's too much competition. Okay, um, and how they're wrong in a lot of um, circumstances. Okay, so. What's it like with the yeah light off is better so let's say you want to enter an industry okay it's probably the best way of doing it and let's say it's selling products so retail okay and you know there's a lot of competition in that niche so you think okay I won't enter that market because there's too much competition. Okay. That's the wrong way to look at it. Okay. You want to look at more of like a supply and demand factor and how much market share these other businesses have taken from like demand. Okay. So let's say, make it a bit easier. So let's say you want to start a business, service business, I don't know, cleaning windows or send like a trade, like central heating or plumbing, electrician, whatever. Okay. So service business and you need to serve people who are local. You know, if you're building a business from scratch, usually, um, unless you want to sort of branch out, you know, um, at the beginning. But yeah, for most people, say you live in like, you know, a small city or a town, you start local, okay? So what you want to do is weigh up how many, let's say, you want to be an electrician okay start an electrical business you want to work at how many other electricians there are in that area okay and how much of a market there is for it okay and how much market share they're taking from that okay <clears throat> so if, for example, loads of people are crying out for electricians, okay, but everyone's super busy, um, you know, you can't get anyone in short notice, most people are booked up for a few months at a time, that's great, okay, they need more electricians, okay, even, even if there are lots of electricians around, okay. The same as photography if you can't book in a photographer uh, because everyone's so super busy a short notice that's great you know there's not enough there's more um, demand than there is supply okay retail let's say e-commerce you're selling products on the internet through the internet okay let's try to think I wish there was a curtain on that one so that's a bit bright there might go into the office in a minute actually um, I'll only make it 10 15 minutes I won't go on too long because um, I don't like rabbiting on anyway so let's say retail okay and you're looking at different categories and you think, oh, I won't go into that category because there's too much competition, okay? But if all those sellers are making lots of money, okay? Not all sellers will, but the people who are making money and doing things right are all making good money. It's not oversaturated, okay? Because it means there's more demand then there is supply of the products. Okay. 
So <clears throat> I, I used to fall down this trap of, oh, yeah, I won't start that business because, you know, there's there's too many people at it. Okay. But if you if it's an internet business, okay, um, I believe in it over the next 20 years, most people will be, you know, working from the internet. Their jobs will be basically internet based. Okay. Um, <clears throat> even if it's a service business, you know, because <clears throat> of all the apps and everything you have nowadays, just think what it's going to be like in 20 years. You'd be able to do so much more. Anyway, so <clears throat> retail, um, you've got a lot of sellers in that industry, but they're all making lots and lots of sales, okay? What you need to then look at is your margins, okay? So it's all well go all well and good going into a competitive um, industry, even though all of the, all the good sellers are making lots of money. But you also need to look at margins, okay? Um, <clears throat> Your return on investment, okay? So your return on money from buying stock to selling it. The difference between the two, okay? Because um, if the profits are too slim, then it's not It's not great. Uh, it's very risky, okay? So there's a happy medium to it, okay? So I would say don't go into something that's too competitive, um, but I would go into something that is competitive and there's always there's already a huge demand for okay and even better than that um, create your own brand trademark it and everything like that um, and that helps your profitability in a huge way okay because um, for example let's say clothing category so Hugo Boss okay um, think of the cost of their t-shirts, okay, because their brand is so valuable, okay, and it's just like, there'll be a t-shirt that doesn't, you know, fade in the wash over time, it's long lasting, and it just has that logo, logo and slogan on it, okay, little logo and slogan, you know, how cheap they could man get a manufacturer to manufacture their um, clothing so say for example they sell a t-shirt for 65 bucks or pounds okay they probably get them made for like $12 um, because it's just a t-shirt at the end of the day that's you know good quality material okay great quality material with just their branding on it okay just having their own brand on it makes it that much more valuable even though the clothing category is very 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 competitive okay but they still kick ass um nike for example you can buy nike shoes it costs you say a couple hundred quid um but it's the value is in their branding okay <clears throat> so yeah um the best way to look at that is um, is you can go into a competitive market, okay, um, as long as there's huge demand for your products um, and there's never going to be too many sellers, okay. Um, profit margins need to be um, um, good. So by doing that, you want to ideally down the road create your own brand, okay, and trademark it, okay. Um, um, I wouldn't, you know, worry too much about patenting anything because unless you're creating your own product and you don't want people to copy, okay. Um, but if, as long as you trademark your brand um, people won't be able to make the exact same product as you okay um, and what you want to do is differentiate your product oh, no, I just hung off <laughs> uh, 
you know, just so it stands out from your competition, okay? Um, <clears throat> so say for example, Nike shoes, 140 quid a pair, okay? No other brand, because they're trademarked, no other brand would be able to manufacture the exact same shoes, okay, here in the UK or the US and sell it, okay? Um, because they get done for infringement. Um, it happens online a bit, you know, on eBay it happens, there's, you know, lots of fakes sold. Um, you can get away with it in Asia and uh, certain Euro European countries and places. But like in the UK, in the US, and Canada, um, you know, Australia, Middle East, you can't really get away with that, folks. So, um, yeah, so in terms of competition, ideally you want to look at your competition. This is what I do. And look how they advertise things and how they do business and think to yourself, could I do better than them, most of those guys? Okay, And if you can and it's competitive, then you know you could kick their ass at, you know, at what how they're doing things. Do you know you can see you can do better than they can. That's great. Like service business as well. So plumbing, okay. If all the plumbers, most of the plumbers in your area have got like crappy websites, um, they don't market their businesses very well, and you know you could go in and do a much better job, okay? Um, you could literally hire someone to do a website for you and make them look better than 90% of your competitors' websites, um, for example, you know? Um, that's that's brilliant, even if there is tons of competition, okay? Um, <clears throat> if they're driving, you know, old clapped out vans and, you know, don't advertise much and still get in the work. If you go in there and you advertise better than they do, you're going to get the work, aren't you? Okay. Obviously, most of it's through word of mouth, so it does take time to get the word around. But you, get, you get the point, okay? So you want to look at your competition um he thinks you know you could do business better than that, that business better than they can by advertising marketing it better okay then i wouldn't worry too much about competitions oh I, I used to i used to worry about competition far too much okay but you want to look at the um market share how much market share you can take by just judging how they do business you know other businesses do business, how they market their brands and things. Okay, um, if you can do better than they can, doesn't matter too much about competition as long as you, you know, kick their ass in their industry. Um, like Mark Cuban says, what's this saying? So he say, you know, he knows that nobody would be able to step into his industry um, and work. 24 hours a day seven days a week um like he does you know he, you know he's more you know more determined than the majority of people so he work 24 hours a day seven days a week just to make sure you kick your ass so you have to know your business better than anybody else in the world okay um so if you can get into an industry where you think to yourself i can beat all these guys that's brilliant Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, it's just a video on competition. Okay, don't let that scare you. All right, folks. So yeah, I said it won't go in longer than 15 minutes. So I'll leave it there. If you like this one, click the thumbs up. If you want any more, let us know in the comment section. And subscribe. Click that bell notification so you get notified of future videos. And uh, let us know in the comments if you want me to leave any videos on any specific topics. Yeah, you can tell I've said that a fair few times now. <laughs> See you on the next one, guys. Peace.